Hi there, I'm Norman Sanzo, and I want to say sorry in advance for the sound quality in this episode. Our guest had some technical issues with his microphone, and it may be hard to understand him on some parts of the show. Once again, I'm sorry. And now, please enjoy the show. Welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 22. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is The News Pony. Hello. Hi, News. How are you? I'm doing a fine. Thank you. Oh, anything interesting happened to you today? Nothing much. Today is pretty much uh, same old, same old. Ah, okay, cool. And also joining us today is Sonda Fong. Hi. So, Ninja. how are you? A bit sick, but yep, working fine. So, before we start, we have to ask you the four basic questions. And question number one is, who's your favorite pony? Well, technically, I can't answer that question because every every pony is my favorite pony. Um, Rarity is the best pony. (laughs) Okay, every pony is the best pony. Rarity is the best pony then. You you guys never heard that. So, um, why is every pony is the best pony? Rarity is the best pony. Good point. Well, um, do you have kids? Well, I don't have kids, but... Try try choosing your favorite kid. That doesn't happen. Same thing goes with ponies. You You can't have... Pretty much a favorite pony, except Rarity. <laughs> okay, I mean, that sounds legit. On to the next question. Um, what's your favorite episode? Definitely Kendra Law Wedding. Oh, the season finale? Yes. Why? Why, why is that uh, episode good for you? Well, basically, we were expecting some sort of wacky mumbo jumbo from Hasbro since they were marketing it so hard. Perhaps no one really expected yeah, how the entire plot develop, developed and stuff like that, so... I guess it was cool that it took us all by surprise, I guess. Oh, okay, cool. I mean, the songs in there were pretty good. Yeah, you could say that. I mean, what else can you expect from a good episode? You have good characters, you have a decent plot. Yeah, plot. Get awesome background music, um, song music. Basically, everything just fit together like a puzzle. I mean, you've got good episodes like um, standalones like Lesson Zero, you have It's About Time, and, you know... The finale was just everything taken up to 11. So, um, the next question is, how did you become a fan of the show? Well, it's a long story. A year ago, I stumbled on, me and my friend just stumbled on some random videos on the internet, in days and all. And I just stumbled on this trailer called, what's it called? Um, I, this would be funny because it's um, a parody of the Dark Knight trailer, what's it called? The Rainbow oh. Knight. It's not you, because um, Dark Knight Rises is just started playing like now like a few months ago and um yeah we from there we linked to different videos like um ponycraft 2 and ton of interesting crap and then we just started hey this is a good show let's watch it and see what happens and well here we are okay cool another youtube fellow viewer of the internet with ponies that does tend to happen okay. yeah of course so what do your family and friends think about your love for the show well, I got into this fandom with my best friend, so uh, I guess that counts for something. At least there's someone to talk to about show stuff that you can't relate to other people. My family's okay with it, I guess. Um, they, they, they have the usual, you know, um, they, pick, they, they tease you about um, your love for candy-colored equines that are meant for girls, but obviously they don't actually mean it. At least I hope they don't. <laughs> true, true. That, that does tend to happen a lot with families and yeah. the ponies. Yeah, I, I mean, it's okay if they just tease you about it. I mean, it's all good fun. No one actually hates you for liking something. True, true, true. It's just a show. You don't have to take it too seriously. And again, we take everything seriously. Yes, it's the I, internet. We are probably the most serious fandom on the internet right now. Mm. True, okay. true. That is true. We are trending. Yep, yep. So anyway, uh, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news time. In today's news time, pony jewelry. The ultimate pony merch is available. The good folks at Och Movement have made a My Little Pony Friendship is Magic necklace. The necklace is 2.5 inch in size and comes in various materials. From cast metal with pink plated finish to metal with silver tone finish. 
and it even comes in a gold plated finish with a genuine diamond attached for the eyes. The price for the pink and silver necklace is $250 and the gold and diamond necklace is at $450. Links and pictures can be found in the show notes. So guys, what do you think? Utterly ridiculous. Really? Why? It's an exorbitant price. Who would pay it for $250 or $450 for an ornament like that? Well, to be honest, it's actually jewelry if you think about it. But I, um, it, it's, it doesn't look right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's jewelry. It, jewelry doesn't have to look right. Well, and okay. yet we spent four thousand dollars on the fanny plushie. Oh, Indeed. <laughs> to put that in perspective. Yeah, I forgot about that <laughs> bit of news. That's as well as sketches, like sketches on paper. Well, those are for charities. Those are for charities. You don't you don't use that as uh, ammunition. Those are used for charities. Then again, you do. We do have the spending capability. I mean, for all intents and purposes, if you're marketing for a group of, if you're marketing ponies, you're marketing for young girls. But ever since this fandom got so big, we have the spending power to actually start buying these things. So logically, Hasbro has to take the next step. Try new markets, I guess. Well, actually, oh, this is not officially from Hasbro, really. I'm it's sorry. It's licensed. Yeah, yeah. It's it's... Self, like, you have to get a license from Hasbro. And you, Hasbro would receive a commission from them for using those licenses. Yeah, that's true. But it's what the other people like Orch Movement is doing with the licensed product. For all purposes, Capcom could buy the license and make a video game of the ponies. Hmm. The magic of this is that Hasbro is not directly involved, so they can they can just give the license to a um, third party manufacturer like Wheel of Fine, who does the T-shirts for um, MLP, and Hasbro doesn't actually directly lose money because they are not actually producing the products, but these companies are, and yet they still get um, a certain amount of income for um, giving out the licenses for this stuff. Yeah, it's true. It's licensing. It's all licensing. Yeah, the movie gives a license to Hasbro to actually make the toys. So it's basically coming full circle, except it's on the other side of the um, circle this time. True, true, true. But still, with that in perspective, um, generally, I mean, really, it's, I don't know, it seems that this fandom already is like a niche market. And now they're even, they're going micro niche by, by selling such specific jewelry items. I, I, I've been thinking... Uh, who are they targeting, really, within the fandom? Rich people? Because, like, you're selling video games, you sell premium editions, you get you get tons of stuff in a box. What um, get You buy Halo 3, you get this Master Chief helmet, or you buy um, some game, and then you get a bust of the main character. It's pretty much a similar concept in that it's for those who can afford the luxuries and those who actually want to... Um, support the show, I guess. I, I don't agree with price because it's a hell of expensive, but if you can afford it and you want to show your um, appreciation, there's no harm in buying these things. Well, to be honest, your, uh, your perspective is right, but at the same time, it's a bit off because when you're talking about limited edition stuff, like let's just say the Diablo 3 limited edition, they give you a bus of the Diablo's head and a USB of the Soul Stone, even with a soundtrack and behind-the-scenes DVD. And that costs around 2,000 ringgit, if I remember right. So it's all about the fandom and what they can afford. But with ponies, it's a bit off, really, because how many percent of the fandoms are girl who can afford to buy such jewelry? Um, True. You'd never know. You'd never know. Half the artists we have are um, female. We have um, Max Gofiliak. Actually, most of the artists are female. Most of the artists I know on, uh, on that, that do art for this fan. Yeah, that's true, I true. Mean, I mean, just just taking a sample size from the art community, we already have like a good portion of them are female and kind of doing quite well because you get like a ton of commissions and stuff. I mean, you don't have to spend it on these things, but you can. And if you could, you would, if you're interested in stuff. 
Then again, you don't have to be. It doesn't have to be jewelry. It could be a collector's item. You could use it for display. You could, I mean, even though it's classified jewelry, you can practically do anything you want with it. Basically, yes, true, it's true, true. As a gift. Well, okay, we talk about jewelry long enough, even though we don't wear jewelry ourselves. So let's move on to the next topic. Oh, if you buy it for me, I will wear it proudly. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> now that I think about it, I would too. Oh no! So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. News. Why don't you take this one? Yeah, I'll take this one. Next piece of news. Metal Gear Pony Solid. If you are a fan of Metal Gear and also a fan of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, then you're in luck. Because a YouTube user by the name of Duff Equus has posted videos of game crossover between old school Metal Gear and My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Links can be found in the show notes. So, uh, have any of you guys seen uh, this trailer? It's not really a trailer. It's, um, a, how do I put this? It's kind of a gameplay slash um, PMV, something like that. It's not. It's not really a PMV. It's like um, one of those Doctor Who's and assistant kind of videos. I've checked it out uh, about half of it. Uh, it's pretty impressive. I, I must say that the Brony community can really mod the heck out of games and stuff. So it's it's not something new. But uh, this this I think this project has been uh, pretty uh, has been ongoing for quite some time. Yeah, it's true. I think it's been going on for a year now. But I just enjoy it, really. It's like, when Snake speaks, I'm always like, Commander, what's going on? Why are they ponies in my game? <laughs> it's always get the thing in my head. Like, oh god, this is so fun. Like, every time when the video runs, I have to pause it when there's a scroll of text coming down. And I have to do the voice. <laughs> One more game to look out for. Indeed. There are, so, there are already so many that uh, are highly anticipated in the fandom. So anyways, Sonda, what do you think? I haven't watched the video actually, so I can't, I'm not really in a position to say anything. Ah, uh, you should, because it's really great. I've been disconnected from the fandom for a while. I mean, in, in some cases, I didn't have time to watch all the videos. Okay, okay, no problem then. Well, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is guest time. In today's guest time, we have a very talented artist whose work gets featured on EQD a lot. And his style is really unique than most brony artists. We are proud to bring you Sonder Fong. So, Sonder, would you like to pimp out anything? Like your DeviantArt page or something like that? What can I say? I draw ponies. I draw it occasionally. Okay, so Sonder Fong is an artist who draws ponies occasionally. Alright, cool. Occasionally is kind of an understatement there, don't you think? Well, they have to see your gallery to find out. Let's move on to question times. So, Sonda, when did you start drawing? I don't think I ever stopped. So, when did you begin? <laughs> you, don't, you don't start, you don't stop. You, I, mean, I mean, all of us has, have, been start, have started drawing since we were young. Um, we have art classes, we have basically when you're bored. We start drawing and stuff. I don't know. It just comes. It just happens. We don't stop. We don't start. Ah, okay, that's interesting to answer it. So, what kind of drawing software do you use? Software. Um, I mean, you use Sci these days because um, Sci is very resource. Um, it's based on computer resources a lot. But I also use Photoshop for post processing most of the time. So, you're a mixture of Sci and Photoshop then? And Illustrator occasionally for the factory stuff. Ah, okay. Because from what I've seen of your gallery, you rarely do vectors. You'd be surprised. A lot of the background or extra props within the piece of art you can get, like, um, you have to use vector software. You can use vector software because it's more it's neater and um, you can do perspectives better. I don't know if you can see my video feed. You guys see my video feed? Oh, no, no, not yet. Um, you want to link us? I'll put it in the show notes. Oh, okay, we'll do. Because from what I see, uh, 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 your art is... How do I put it? It's really sci-intensive and Photoshop-powered. Define sci-intensive. Well, the lines, the style, it's really sci. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean... Well, it's all manually drawn. I don't use the line art tool that much. It's just basically how I like to draw things. If you can go to the, um, what you might call it, the link show link. notes page. Yeah, there's a link there. If you can see the background of that picture, the houses and stuff, 
those were done in vector to make it neat because they were all mostly straight lines and curves. So it was easier to make it in vector and um, basically blow it up, blow it up as well as to make make sure the perspective was okay. So these are all done in Adobe Illustrator then. Um, only the background. So the background is done. Okay, cool. So, so just let me clarify once more. Um, so you mean to say that the backgrounds are actually vectors? Not all of them, but occasionally if I need help doing, like, if you have, like, repetitive um, boxes or street lines, like city scenes or um, architecture, you can use vector, which is much easier than drawing street lines inside. Because oh. if you're filling it with flat color and you're not, vectors are pretty fast to make compared to filling in blocks or stuff like that. There is a walkthrough picture somewhere. Yeah, I've just linked it in the show notes. You can see how the vector comes in from the background. Yeah, well, looks like we have a late arrival. Also joining us is Daniel Anthony. Hi, everybody. So, late. why are you late? Oh, I was uh, out with a friend and he told me, I told him, I've got to be back on Saturday at 11 p.m. sharp. And he says, no problem. He had made a wrong turn when coming back. Mm. We got stuck in KL for about, I don't know, half an hour jam. Mm, that's Pity. fun. Well, it depends when you're stuck in the car with someone who's lost. <laughs> I know that feeling. I'm not that good of a driver myself but, as well. It's so you okay. Mess with the pinky GPS. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the pinky GPS will get you even more lost. No, she can use the fourth wall. It leads you directly to the nearest bakery. <laughs> there are tons of bakeries in SS2. That's a good idea. Exactly. Mm, okay, oh, anyway. So, let's continue on, Sonda. So, um, my third question is, do you use a tablet to draw? Of course. Hmm. <laughs> so, what I mean, kind of tablet do you it's use? Pretty, it's pretty much impossible to draw without a tablet. I mean, um, yeah, I'm using... Um, Hang on, let me remember this. It's an Intuos tree. It's an older model, but it gets the job done, I guess. A Wacom, then? Yep. Is there any other model than Wacom? Genius. You can try Genius, but I've got really bad reviews from it. I mean, I've read terrible reviews. Apparently, the wiring is terrible, and their quality control is all over the place. If you want to get a tablet, just get a cheap Wacom. It's... It's much simpler that way. It's quite fairly priced as well, if I think so. Hmm. Pardon? I can... It's quite fairly priced, isn't it? Yeah, the cheaper mod... I mean, you just have to get, basically, um, your strokes on the computer. At my stage, I mean, I'm an amateur, so I probably don't need all the fancy bells and whistles anyway, so... You can just use a cheaper model. It, it's, it's, not, it's not really that much of a difference, I guess. Okay, cool. Because I have a Wacom and... $12,000 on a Cintiq. <laughs> well, it is expensive for a reason. Yes. So anyway, um, my next question is, what is your favorite medium to draw with? Is it pencil and paper or is it with the computer? I like computers because it saves time. I mean, if I draw on pencil and paper, it'll take... I have to go scan it, I have to clean everything up, I have to color it in computer because... Well, basically, markers are expensive, watercolor, everything is expensive. I just pay one tablet. I mean, it's a one-off cost, and you can do everything with a computer without just transferring things from a scanner and just having everything up. You get things done fast, and speed is pretty much the issue if, you're, if you want to constantly churn out so much art. Okay, I mean, understandable. I mean, prior to your... Um use of the computer, which was your preferred medium prior to getting a tablet? I like pen and ink the most. That led to my, um, even after I switched to the computer, there is mostly um, pen and ink style drawing, especially the black and white ones. It's a focus on line art and shade, basically. Sometimes pen and paper does have that feel to it. it it's convenient if you're maybe, maybe you're meeting a in real life like if someone asks you for a quick sketch you can just get you right in front of them but if you want to have a nice display on an online gallery um, the tablet is much cleaner it it just lubricates the whole work process so you don't have to 
um, go through all the weird scanning and all the transferring of information into the computer. So my next question is, how long does it take you to finish drawing? I don't actually keep count, but quick sketches might go for an hour, maybe two. If I'm doing something really big, it can take days. And if I'm doing a comic like that one really, 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 really long comic, that took two weeks. The Summer Sky comics, right? Yes, I am not doing that again. Oh, ever. you that should. Was so awesome. It took two weeks to draw. I had I was rushing for like three different assignments at the time, and I had to finish one frame per night <laughs> to get the whole damn thing done. I am not doing that again. Well, if you have the time, you should because it's great. If I have the time, yes. I mean, well, I can do I can do smaller stuff, but I think that would set my um, comic making abilities a while back. Well, it looks good, and well, you should try the four panel comics. It's uh, a fast way to do it. Yeah, um, you have to think of something like the hardest part of drawing is not how do you draw it, it's what do you want to draw. You have to have a good concept in order to make basically sell an art, for lack of a better term. Um, if you don't have a good idea, I mean, no matter how good you draw, you draw, you'll only bring it that far. True. Well, that's just what I think. True, true. But if you're doing comics, it doesn't really matter how good your drawing is. It's what's the punchline? For lack of a better term, yes. I mean, what's, the punch, what's the idea behind the picture? Yeah, I mean, that's uh, my idea for comics, really. Because have you seen one of those basic um, uh, meme-based comics where they use the troll face and all that stuff? comics, you mean? What yeah. is it? Rage comics. Yeah, rage comics. Like, the art sucks, but the message that it's trying to send, it really delivers sometimes. That's why that's it's the popular. thing about rage comics. Um, it's popular, but not everyone likes it because it's easy to make. And if it's easy to make, anyone can make it. And that always compromises the quality. And the um, basically, it's... Some parts on the internet don't really like it, some parts do, but um, it's getting overused and um, the popularity is dropping these days. So you have to always have fresh ideas and um, something to go by in order to basically keep living in this, keep, um, I mean, working in this um, genre, for lack of a better term. Yeah, that's true, but what I'm trying to say was, is the punchline that is important for a comic really? The Rage comic is just an example of those punchlines going well or going bad. Comics are more of to tell a story rather to actually illustrate art. I don't consider Rage comic art. I mean, it's just a punchline, really. Yeah. It's just there to make you laugh. So anyway, um, my last question for you is, what is your inspiration for drawing? Anything. I mean, you can go down the street, you see something you like, you can think of one thing to draw that, interpret it, um, change it, modify it, um expand on it, make your own story, possibilities are pretty much endless. You just have to have an idea, um, think of a good way to execute that idea, and then execute that idea. That's basically um, how, I, how I think art should be done. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Or, yeah. Can I ask it more in depth, as in what's the inspiration behind Because I see you like to draw Wonder Bolts a lot. Oh, no, that's because um, I'm a bit of a... Um, airplane junkie, so I like, um, I, I have this thing for it, past my aircraft, air shows, fighter jets and stuff, so I guess the closest pony equivalent, for lack of a better term, is the Wonder Boats, as we all know, the Equestria's um, most famous flying team, as well as occasionally defenders from giant dragon attacks. <laughs> true, true. What about your Battlefield 3 uh, picture that you did? Oh, uh, that was... I think Ian requested that. Really? Oh. I oh. can't remember. I, I, I was doing some random sketches, and I did some some sketch of Battlefield 3 because um, a group of us over at old MBS were Battlefield 3, Battle, Battlefield 3 players. Ronson, Ian, me, Z, some, some other people. So, um, yeah, we got together for some nightly sessions. I just wanted to... Um, draw, I mean, give a good sketch of it. Oh, Vincent was there too. So, mm. yeah, that naturally expanded from 
like some random sketch to a full-fledged art piece or something. Because if I remember right, that picture was used as the front picture for Draw Friends. Oh yeah, yeah, it was. Um, that was a very long time ago. Yeah, true, but I still remember it because it was awesome. The recent one was the Avengers one, right? Yeah, that was recent, but I didn't remember if they used it as the they, front cover or not. They did. They, they did. did. I believe they did. Awesome. How long did the particular piece of uh, Battlefield 3 take to complete from start to finish? Um, I can't remember. That was so long ago. I'm going to give like maybe three days because I can't actually remember it. It's actually quite easy because there aren't that much colors in it. I mean... It's basically flat, flat grey all around. I just had to add some blue and orange in the end or something. The highlights are blue and orange, but otherwise it's completely void of colour. Did you add in a, fi- a filter or special effect at the end of it? I usually just, just contrast and maybe like that those lines, TV screen lines. That was just to, as parody of the original image itself. Okay, right. cool. So, News, do you have any questions? Yep, I've got a mixed bag of questions for you. Um, my first question for you is, how would you define art? Well, art in a sense is basically something that allows you to... Um, it, uh, it's an expression of a concept, basically. If you want to draw a picture, you have to express what you want the audience to think. Not only as um, the expression does not... Um, you mean yourself, what you want the audience to think, as well as how the audience interprets the picture. I mean, art comes in any form, sculpture, drawings, music, and you guys should know better, you guys are music homies, right? More or less. Sort of. <laughs> you, guys, you guys are audiophiles. I'm pretty much tone deaf for intents and purposes, but yeah, it's an expression of concept, an ex- expression of yourself, an expression of maybe feelings you want to express. It's how you... Um, you want the world to see what's in your head as well as you want the world to interpret what's in your head, basically. Ah, I see. So, in terms of linking art and pony, uh, would you say that uh, the whole uh, universe of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, has actually uh, explored or improved your capability in the art field? Very much so. I mean, I've, I've ignored, I bought this tablet maybe a year before I got into this fandom and I had like three tablet drawings prior and I had no intention of using the tablet mainly because there was a glitch with the two screens I have but after it got a bit deep in this in this whole shenanigans I mean I started to start draw using my tablet more and yes here I am okay moving on to my next question is what part of the fandom do you find most interesting or most appealing most appealing. Um, I'm a canon follower, so I like following the canon things. I mean, if it fits within the canon, uh, the show canon itself, um, I, I, I like how um, artists can do all kinds of amazing things, but still um, limit themselves within the show canon. That said, there are plenty of other... If you can um, just basically express your concept very well it doesn't really matter anyway so if you can make a good picture you can make a good idea work um, I'm all here so you're not so much of the original characters or um, original fan fictions those kind of things I don't really like fan fiction or OCs because um, for lack of a better term some of them can be quite obnoxious and self-serving for lack of a better term but um yeah, I, I like how people interpret interpret the show differently in their art, and I like how um, how people make pretty pictures of good ideas. I mean, it's nice to have once in a while parodies of interesting things, popular movies, interesting music. Those stuff are quite nice if you know what you do. Really enlightening. All right, building on the on what you've mentioned that uh, some of the OCs are quite obnoxious. If you were to give advice on somebody else who wants an OC or something, how would you make it less obnoxious or at least visually appealing? I'd recommend talking to different people and letting them shape how a character looks like. Because if even um, artists like 
um, myself, I guess. We like to, we have sketches, and if we are doing requests or commissions, we always show the client how um, a picture would look. The client can modify how the picture looks, or you can ask your friends, um, how does this go? Like, when I did the Avengers picture, I had my best friend with me, um, giving me ideas and giving me critiques. And that is the key of getting some, getting to make something good because it lets you, it lets another person look and interpret an, a piece of art from different eyes and different viewpoints. And they can catch things you can never catch. So feedback is magic. Mm, okay, cool. Feedback is magic. Okay. My next question. Uh, prior to the My Little Pony fandom, uh, were you in any other fandom before? Not as serious as what I'm in now, but um, I like like spaceships and stuff. I mean, you can you go to my gallery, you already know. How about yeah. Doctor Who? <laughs> Doctor Who, I actually got in about a year before ponies. Yeah, it's it's quite interesting, but there isn't that much art to do because because of the nature of the show itself. It's not really. Um, it's open to interpretation. You can write millions of fan fictions about it, but it's really hard to think of something um, decent enough to draw. There are, well, for starters, it's a live action show, so you have to have your own style and your own way of interpreting how live action would be. And I don't think I'm that. I'm I'm rubbish at drawing people anyway. So, what about crossing over and drawing Doctor Who's instead? Yeah, that that totally works. I mean. Doctor Who is one of my favorite characters. I have it on a somewhere behind me. And, um, yeah, I mean, you can make... It's interesting how people mix the two shows canon together and how people weave the storylines of Doctor Who and um, MLP together to get the craziest and the most interesting results. Very so, um, were you surprised that Doctor Who was in the My Little Pony universe? No surprise at all. It's everywhere. I mean, Doctor Who. Doctor Who is crossed over by. I mean, there are there's that awesome picture of Star Trek and Doctor Who. Um, someone drew it on Divina. That was magic. And I mean, if Doctor Who is crossed over, cross, is crossed over with everything, and ponies are also crossed over with everything, the two are practically the two meeting would be practically inevitable. I mean, um, part of the reason I actually joined, got information on this fandom was basically from Doctor Who forums. Or um, microblocks. Okay, cool. I mean, once you explain it that way, Doctor Who does fit into every universe there is. The thing about Doctor Who and ponies is that the show's canon itself creates a universe. It gives you um, limits on how the universe works and how um, how things in the universe act. Like um, Doctor Who, you have time travel. Ponies, you have magic, and that's the foundation of everything we build it on. I mean, our fandom is built on um, love and tolerance because it's part of the show canon itself, and every, all the of um, our fandom is based on these small building blocks that the show provides. That's what makes it successful, in my opinion. So, moving on to the next question, you recently uh, made a new uh, Tumblr. Is that correct? I guess. You can all right. With that. So, do you actually visit other people's Tumblr before this? I'm actually I actually visit uh, quite a few people. I'm um, I'm a fan of Egophiliac. Um, some of Mad Max stuff is quite good as well. It's okay. I don't think it's okay. These are the top uh, John Joseco runs um, Olympia and Gamer Luna, which oh, no. my friends are a fan of. But oh. I just go there because of the art. I mean, what, why? what can you say? Why? He draws quite well. Well, there isn't that. It, it isn't actually that bad. I mean, you just it's take the... It's a decently entertaining blog. Yeah, it's a decently entertaining blog. If you, um, even if it's a bit on the dark, darker side of the fandom. It's not It's nothing dark. actually that explicit anyway. Really? And you wrote it there, you just... No. It's just a bit raunchy, really. Pardon? I can't hear you. Sorry, it's, a, it's just a bit raunchy, really. I mean, it's not yeah, that... It's jokes at face value, I mean. For all intents and purposes, these blogs are meant to it's not like serious stuff where they just smack um, copy stuff right in your face or something. Okay, which brings me to my key question. Uh, which part of the Tumblr verse did you find most appealing and why? As in, what's so special about Tumblr? The magic of Tumblr is that 
Well, to be fair, I just started a vlog because I have nothing better to do and to answer questions the Wonderful Diaries. Um, I'm assuming that's what we're referring to. Yes, we are, yes. It's interesting to have a question asked to you and you can spend days trying to figure out a good way to answer it. You have, you can um, think of great ideas, great jokes, punchlines, and to answer those questions within the context of the universe as well as the characters you're writing for. It's basically an advanced form of, um, I hate to say this, fan fiction, but it takes more, it, there is more thought and um, effort gone into it because it's drawn so, you mentioned the artist uh, Egophiliac Pixel Cuties, um, John Zosweco, and who, who was the last one? Mad Max. Oh, Mad Max, right, right. Max, right. yeah. So, out of these four, would you say that you have a favorite or you like them all? My favorite artist actually is in that, in, is in, in that list. Uh, oh. My favorite artist for this random is actually this guy called, um, how do you pronounce his name? Karzani? He's on Reddit, he's called. He's, he goes under the name Derpa Herpesaurus. I really <laughs> like his work. That's an awesome name. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah, you, you, have to link, you have to link us in the show notes. Um, hang on, I'll link it to his deviant art. All right. This okay. is actually one of, he's actually one of my favorite artists in this family. So my next question would be about uh, the, the show in general. How long do you see uh, My Little Pony Friendship in Magic uh, lasting in terms of seasons? As a fan... Forever. <laughs> As a realist, because traditionally um, shows go on for, I can't remember the exact number, but they have, uh, there's a limited number of episodes a show goes for at first in order to syndicate the same series um, four times a year. So you get 50, um, 52 weeks, 52 or something, uh, something, something, calculation, something, I can't remember. I'm not good at math. But Basically, what we are at is that that initial first batch. We are at that point in the series where um, the big changes are coming. Where how it's up to the obviously it's up to the producers to see the future of our series, um, how they expand. I mean, um, technically it can go on forever. You can introduce a million and one things. It's um, the franchise itself has gone since nineteen um, eighties. Doctor Who even longer in 1963. Um, I can see this going on forever, but realistically, um, I mean, give us ten more seasons. I'm happy with that. Excellent. As long as as long as the quality um, stays at the level that everyone can enjoy, and Hasbro is making tons of money now from this show anyway, so I don't see this going off very soon, or at least not in the foreseeable future. In a very recent article, uh, it has been confirmed that season 3 is uh, 13 episodes long. So do you think that this might uh, at all be a factor to be worried about, or not really? Um, if you see an, an even more recent article posted maybe a few hours ago by William Anderson, he kind of hints on the future of the series. So I'm pretty sure we shouldn't be worrying about these things, and we should just, I mean... Just for all intents and purposes, the producers haven't let us down anyway. So I trust them to basically do what's best for us. Sonda, the thing you were saying about the producers was William Anderson, right? Yes. He, he yes, wrote a poem. Background music. Yeah, he yes. wrote a poem about Don't Worry. Um, it goes something like this. Seasons, Seasons there are there many, are of, many them. of them. Some of them Some shorter, than, shorter others, than others, perhaps for special reasons. To be followed by another longer season, seasons, many seasons. Yes, that was just posted. I think the poem um, five hours ago, maybe I threw it up on. Um, I I saw it on YouTube. I got no idea how to count time because it says here ten fifty five p.m. But I'm thinking it's their time, so I got no idea how to count. Yeah, it's American time. Um, I mean, yeah, I but I mean, I mean, obviously they can't tell us. Yeah, they are legally binded not to tell us direct things, but they can, however, hint at whatever's happening in the studios. I mean, they, obviously they can't tell us they, are, they have these things called non-disclosure agreements that basically you can't tell what's going on in the studios or else Hasbro will sue ass off for backup. 
for um, leaking up all this stuff. Something like a no spoilers policy. Something like that. Okay. I mean, mm-hmm. legally, it's all shows have them. Like, that's why you don't get leaked movies early or something. I mean, sometimes you get them, but that's why um, that's how that's how the show business works for for as far as I know. Well, interesting enough, when you say about shortened seasons, one of the shows that I used to watch was Kim Possible, and the first season was 21 episodes, the second season was 30 episodes, and the third season was the last, was 14 episodes long. The thing about Kim Possible was that it was cancelled at first, Mm. but then there was a lot of um, interest within the product itself that it got revived for a I think it was the third season. I haven't actually no, watched... No, no, it's uh, the, the fourth season, really. It was yeah, the it was, fourth season. It was season. revived. I, I, if I recall correctly, it was revived because of the amount of interest in the series. And, I mean, how big is that fandom I, compared to us? We can we have the willpower. We can, we can practically convince anyone at this point. Well, yeah. how do I explain this? Um, the Kim Possible fandom is a pretty small niche market, really. It's exactly what happened if they can do it why can't we do it yeah it's true but for Kim Possible they had a lot of fan feedback to do a fourth season and now they're trying to well not really now but they're trying to do a fifth season for the show yeah I mean it's a really long time but I mean um, if they could achieve if they could convince the art studio to make a fourth season, and we've already been consistent with giving feedback to our studios, I, I don't think they're going to let us go that easily. I mean, in terms of, um, in terms of episodes and seasons. Maybe they're planning something even bigger. Who knows? Ooh, but for what I've seen this poem is, um, it's basically, okay, my interpretation of it is, it's already set for 13 episodes for season three because it's set. You Like you said, they have to do a set number of episodes to do syndications. but That is correct. But what they're trying to do is um, go all out for season 4. The thing is, the best part of these kind of posts, they never actually tell you what's going to happen, so it's up to your imagination. And they could be plotting anything, basically anything. They could be plotting a movie, they could be plotting a 500 episode season, they could be plotting a new channel for we care, but that's the beauty of it. We don't know and we won't know until it actually happens because I, at this point in production, season 3 is probably already finished and they are already looking for the future. True, true. But my prediction is they've done 13 episodes for season 3 and they're getting ready rev up for season 4 because ponies are making them money. Why stop the cash cow from producing more money? Actually, that's pretty much what I've been saying for the past... Um, the past, the entirety of whatever I've just been saying, but um, yeah, basically, the producers, we are we already are quite quite large fan base. No one's, you've already had um, our, um, they already fan series does enough, so um, we've already give consistent feedback and stuff. So they're not going to let us go that easy. No, not yet. Mm-hmm. I think at the end of the day, the uh, generation form will always be a benchmark for uh, future generations to look at. I, well, of course. Yeah, yeah. true, true. I, from what I've seen right now is um, G4 Ponies is the benchmark for every show. Animation, right? Yeah, because it's... How do I put this? It doesn't really matter what tool you use as long as it's good quality all around. Yes, voice acting, music, animation, storyline, all right. of it. And even writing. So after all this talk about the community and uh, the fandom itself, how much pony merchandise do you actually own? Not much, actually. I have the um, McDonald's sets that um, premiered in Malaysia a while back. Um, my friend got them for me when I was in Australia. I have two sets of those four-pack, those mini blind bag things. Yeah. And I just have a shirt from We Love Fine. Z helped me order that, so yeah, that's the, pretty much it. The Doctor Who I shirt. I mean, as a, yeah, as a student, you don't really like, get, you don't get that much of spending Hey, do you have the Australia McDonald pony toys? Unfortunately, f- at this part of Australia, they didn't actually look at McDonald's, so I missed on that one. Really? Because that's interesting. Because um, from what I heard, um, uh, one of our co-hosts, Tash, she only got a Pinkie Pie. Um, Tash is based in Melbourne, if I'm not mistaken. 
Uh, Melbourne's pretty big city, so I guess they get stuck. I mean, she yeah. only got one. Like, she only got a pinky pie. That, that's the strange part. No other pony, but... Here's a fun fact. On Toy Wiz, the price of the pinky pie pop toy is actually the second highest. I know, I know. Toy. It's ridiculous. I'm hoping somebody won't break into my car and steal it because it's hanging in the rear view mirror. It would be strange because perhaps stocks work differently. Um, Hasbro is is basically making these toys for third party like McDonald's, so maybe they're getting inconsistent stocks or just leftover stocks from the US because the US basically premiered these um, items first. I don't know how that works. I'm not marketing expert. Um, fun fact. You know the three sets of pony toys with the Wonder Ball, the Gilda, and Rainbow Dash toy sets. What what set are those called? I don't really remember. Well, those three three, three packs. Three packs. Uh, yeah. The Cloud Steel set, the Cantalot Wedding set, and Apple Family set. Yeah, it's that set. And a fan of mine recently gave one to me, and well, he actually gave me a full set, ma, because you can find my Facebook page. But anyway, um, from what he told me that. Everything is produced in Australia. I mean, sorry, um, distributed in Australia. I have no idea. I, I'm not a merchandise person. I just, I just find it funny, really, because, like, you guys have a hard time getting ponies, but your country is the one that is sending ponies away. <laughs> it's funny that way. Yeah. Um, like, cameras, they're produced in quality lenses. I mean, in Vietnam, and you go to Vietnam, you can't find bloody lens because no one sells them. <laughs> It's probably just um, licensing labor costs and stuff not really. like that. I mean, I think it's large corporations definitely work differently than what we interpret them to be. Right? I think it's actually the free trade thing because uh, even me, since I'm in the balloon business, there is a very signature brand of balloons that are produced in Malaysia. They're really, really huge. They're more than two meters wide, but you can't purchase them here because they're made exclusively for export. Exactly. So if you want them, you have to go to some other country and buy them. It's a local product from Malaysia, but you have to get out of the country and buy it. <laughs> it's funny it sounds it sounds like our petrol, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's not our petrol, right? I mean, there's Petronas. I mean, we import petrol, but we do actually resell it in, within the country itself. It's just maybe no one buys them or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Uh, all right. Oh, wait, all right. It's Petronas anyway. <laughs> Oh, some of us oh. do, some of us do. Uh, no, are you shelf? Andrew WK drinks it. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Okay. All right. Let's 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 get this back on track. Is there any other random merch which uh, you you have around your area, uh, such as those uh, food stocks or cookies, those the kind of things? Um, the cookies were on sale on this really really obscure store called Aldi's a while back. I think that was during January when I just. When I did my first semester here, um, I couldn't get like four packs before they were sold out. Those, those things go out fast. <laughs> I couldn't find the fruit tails as hard as I tried in the recent few weeks I've been here. So um, I'll have to I'll have to look into that. I don't know how we stop these things. Uh, the funny thing is that um, the shops here work. The stocks in the shops here work really strangely because it's a small town. Arts for the um, for the um, what you call it's like a four pack of um, Twilight Dash um, EJ not not EJ Pinkie Pie and Rarity that one was sold by a chain store called Kmart and right. there's only one Kmart in this whole town that I could find them. I mean I've been to like five different Kmart's all over town but you don't stock them and the strange part that Kmart is not the biggest one in this city. So it's really strange how they stop these things. I have no idea. Uh, getting back to the original uh, image which we discussed earlier, the Battlefield image, I'd like to ask you, if uh, do you think there is a relationship between fans of MLP and video gamers in general? Well, there is definitely crossovers. I mean, um, we all share a common interest. In fact, we are 90% online based. You can't find these communities in a community center or fan club. Okay, maybe you can in universities, but not in general. Gamers operate mostly online, and so does um, only for, bet, for um, lack of a better um, understanding. So, um, the, it's basically you're putting two different groups who like the same things in the same room, if that makes sense. True, true. I mean, it is. It 
the room, that room is basically the internet and, and um, what's popular on the internet, like um, 4chan, Reddit, where people of people with these similar interests all meet together. So there's definitely cross pollination between all the different rooms, and that's why there's so much cross pollination all kinds of schemes. I like how you use the term cross pollination. <laughs> okay. The flowers. My final question for the day uh, is. If one were to get a single image manipulation program, what, in your opinion, should it be? If you can, um, if you have the resources, get Photoshop. Photoshop. Because Photoshop does everything, everything you have to do. If you have the computer resources as well as the um, monetary assets, barring that other way, which I'm not at liberty to discuss because I don't want to get. Yar, we understand what you're talking about. You guys know what I mean, right? <laughs> right? Yep. You, can't, you guys can't be that, right? Alright, uh, so, yeah, I, I definitely recommend Photoshop. If you can't afford Photoshop and you don't want to go to the um, less savory methods, you can try GIMP, which is actually pretty damn powerful. Yeah, it also supports uh, 64-bit operating systems as well as um, multi-core. I think it supports multi-core. If I'm not mistaken, sure. the latest version supports uh, pressure sensors on the Wayfork tablet. Yep, it. Um, I think it does give you graphics card acceleration as well. So that's pretty powerful, and it has a million plugins. So whatever hole in your arsenal of software, you can just find a random plugin on the internet and just plug it in. That's the beauty of it. That's awesome. All right, I think that concludes uh, the questions. Thank you very much, Sander, for answering them. So, Daniel, you have any questions? Yeah, just a few only. And um, first one is uh, something about I remember reading your Deviant Art a short while ago, and uh, I noticed you had a note about how people treat artwork. Do you have anything to say about that in general? I mean, these two sense you don't need to answer. Um, I'm okay. I mean, we are we are basically fans of a TV show. So, if you want to treat artwork, you have to treat it at face value. I mean, legally, we can't sell whatever we draw. So, um, I'm actually an advocate of drawing for just. Um, just for your own entertainment, I don't actually like doing commercial stuff because it's, for one thing, it's unethical to sell some something that isn't you because Hasbro owns a copyright. Unless Hasbro pays you, that's a different thing. But yeah, as fan artists, I think we should strive for drawing, um, drawing images that express our love for the show, for for a lack of better term. Oh, so what's your opinion about commissions then? Commissions, um, I don't actually like doing them. But occasionally, if I have the time and chance, I tried it once. It's not that fun to do. It took like four weeks. And um, I'm not really much of an advocate for commissions. What about requests? Is there, if you, there's more margin of freedom on requests? Yeah, there's more margin of freedom on requests. But um, then again, you can't have, you can't be doing requests all the time, especially with cop- novel um, quality because um, color, shape, everything takes time. I'm cool with doing like quick requests if I have the time. Just do it like it's for your friends and your friends want something done, you can just do it for them. No, no harm done. So uh, if anyone was to come across your deviant art or uh, pay a lot of attention to QB and the girlfriends, um, I think anyone would say you're a very committed fan, but how much of your life do you really devote to for this? I think at this point, it's it's practically a religion. I mean, for for lack of a better comparison, I think it's actually made for... It might sound cheesy as hell, but I mean, I like the concept of the show that um, the ideas that it promotes, love and tolerance, friendship is magic. And I think it, it, it helps people to strive to be better people. You can believe in anything. You can be in any situation, but... I think the ultimate goal is just to be the betterment of yourself and whatever qualities you enjoy. No, no, it's not cheesy at all. In fact, I totally back it up. So, Sonder, uh, Luna Celestia? I'm going to have to go with Celestia. Ah, you're, ah, you yeah. praise the sun. No! Ah, Only because Luna keeps me up all night just to work. <laughs> Wait, so we all support Celestia? No, I'm a Luna fan. Oh, okay. Okay, burn the heretic. <laughs> Into the moon. <laughs> oh, 
the reason why a lot of Brody studied Sunway. Oh, right. <laughs> oh. Wait, you three are Celestia fans? I prefer yep. Celestia over Luna. Oh. You should join the Lunar Republic because it's fun. Uh, Although Kaden is prettiest princess, Celestia is the best. <laughs> uh, how, how do we end up here? Okay, okay, I'm now officially defecting to Kaden. <laughs> She cheats. She uses love. <laughs> exactly. Actually, speaking of Cadence, her toy has arrived on... I'm sorry? What's it? Cadence, the toy for Cadence. Yeah. 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 The same size as the Celestia toy and it's arrived in the shelter. Oh, yeah, cool. I know. I, I, 122 I, ringgit. Was that it? Every color? I Isn't it just a no, color of the Celestia? Theme. No, actually, it's a remodel. If you look at Purple Thinker's YouTube site, she did a review of it and she said there were small... How was it? Small modifications? Done to it? Yeah, because, I mean, it's got the same button on the flank. Uh, in case you didn't know, Papa Tinker is the founder of Bronicon, number one. Yeah, I know. You know. Yeah. Okay. It, it still has that button on the flank, and it, she's, got, she's wearing a dress, so I can't see her really much. And if you press it, she does her signature giggle. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 oh, I, I, I refrain from commenting. A lot of the um, more bigger toys, other than the blind bags, are pretty, are, aren't really like meant for people like us they're yeah. not show accurate at all they're more of the um, let the little girls have their fun type of toys I mean it's not a bad thing Lauren Faust got those toys and look what she became so yeah if you want to support I guess there's other ways to, um, you can just get your own little blind bag and color it yourself if you really 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 want that show accurate stuff I have no idea true 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 then again you can use pink you can go find some pink less dear. <laughs> oh, Pink Lestia is the best Celestia. Really now? Well... Take and send him to the moon. <laughs> I shall join my princess of the night. <laughs> Back here already, where are you going to go? Well, join her. <laughs> okay, uh, just Don't worry, the moon festival is two months away. You have plenty of time. Oh. Yay! Okay, so um, next one is, um, where do you see draw friends going in the future of um, MLP, especially in terms of relationships how do you see the relationship between artists, visual artists like you and producers of the show going in the future? There's already a really good connection. Um, there is a really large um, portion of the people who work on the show are already on sites like DeviantArt. Will Anderson, um, Lauren Faust, um, Sabrina El um, All kinds of people are on DeviantArt right now. And I think it's really great that some of them are appreciating the content that we are throwing out at them. I mean, um, some of the artists are already like um, EQD, staple artists, um, JJ, um, Ego, Filiac, Pixelkitties are all um, pretty well-known, um, what was the name, Citra 360, was it? Yeah, it's yeah, awesome. They are, they are already um, basically the forerunners of our artistic division, and I'm really glad that the producers and the artists work really well together. I mean, they've... Even the um, merchandise, um, Bila Fine is now selling some of their art on yeah. t-shirts and oh, yeah. products. It's brilliant. I mean, it's really nice to see that uh, we get to get our own input into these um, into things we want to be seen. So where do you really? see this going in the future? Where do I see it going in the future? Um, I'm hoping that the relationship stay strong and so that the both parties will have mutual respect for each other and as far as um, um, how do you say it priority priority to um, to the art itself so that it can be enjoyed by everyone else I guess okay so um, my last question would be you know earlier you said you're more inclined towards canon right correct yeah so uh, how do you feel towards crossovers like with Avengers and Doctor Who and stuff that we've drawn and stuff that we see currently if you can make it work, and if you can make it work very well, there is no harm doing it. If you can make it really funny, or you can make it really epic, you can re- make it look really great, I mean, why not? The idea is there, the execution is there, it's basically another piece of art, for lack of a better term. Alright, true, true. So, let's move on to the next topic, and the next topic is email time. As usual, we don't have any mail. So, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at show at gmail.com. And you can also reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter page is at show. I'm at Norman Sanzo. I'm at St. Pinky. 
and the news pony doesn't have one. So, Sandra, do you have a Twitter page? Uh, no, I'm not a Twitter person. Okay, you can no check problem. my Tumblr out. Uh, I'm my game, I think I can actually remember how the spelling goes. Okay, then my, I'll just link it in the show notes. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes. Links will be provided in the show notes. So, is that all, guys? Are we done? Yep. Are we're you done. a ninja? Oh, almost, now we're done. <laughs> Are you a ninja? Okay, anyway. So, I've been Norman Sanzo. I'm Daniel Anthony. I'm the news pony. I'm Sander. And Bye. we'll see you next week. See ya. Bye. Bye. And the next topic is email time. And email time is... Well, none, as usual. So, <laughs> if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at gmail.com. Sorry, um, that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then go go get a bunch of random emails from people. No, no, no you can so. only use Gmail. No Hotmail, no Yahoo, nothing. You can only... <laughs> Hotmail is just email. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me try that again. <laughs>